Hi guys, welcome back to The Law of One Raw Material. We are on book three and this is part seven. And in these next two sessions, it's just really full of a lot of material. So you might wanna listen to it a couple of times, but as an intro, they talk about the wanderers quite a bit in this next session. And this is more kind of like my wheelhouse. And when they're talking about wanderers and the things that they can do uh, here and what they came here for, it's actually a very individualized for each wanderer uh, to be here. And, and most of them, whether it's from th fourth density to sixth density, it's really just basic, like just coming here to uh, raise the vibration, almost being, you know, a lighthouse, a light worker. Uh, and some wanderers come here to teach, some wanderers come here to do uh, uh, more specific things but but I will tell you that all wanderers and it doesn't matter if you're a star seed or a wanderer or any other higher dimensional being when you volunteer to come into 3d to help raise the vibration for a positive harvest into fourth density um, if you're coming here into 3d that means you come here and agree to the rules that 3d has and abide by the uh, the free will that is by law in this density. And you can't come here as a wanderer, even though if you come from six density, you can't come here with all the six density attributes of your body and your consciousness because you would seem godlike um, in 3D. So you have to go through the veil of forgetting and you have to ascend like everybody else within this density. But after this incarnation, it's up to each individual wanderer uh, for their own personal expansion of what they want to do. And most wanderers will continue to be wanderers and it'll be their choice. A lot of wanderers kind of get stuck in the karma. Some wanderers, um, you know, they end up having a lot of family and kids and, and things like that. And they get kind of caught up in earth and then they end up wanting to stay with their earth tribe for a while. And some wanderers will continue on to um, whatever origins they have. The, there's so many possibilities and Ra was trying to condense it into three uh, brackets of what wanderers come here to do and why it is that they, even a wanderer, has to abide by the third density rules. You know, even though say in sixth density, um, travel as a sixth density entity would not, wouldn't need a vehicle. It wouldn't need a car or a plane. It would be able to just use its consciousness to like fly around. But you've agreed to come into third density, so there is no flying, okay? Um, and that's why, you know, Ross says it would seem godlike to have uh, awakened six density entities with their full attributes here. But that being said, um, the opportunities that are here in third density as we move into fourth are the same as anybody else. And a lot of people call it, you know, attaining God consciousness, becoming enlightened, which means you have the same opportunities to ascend up through the densities within one lifetime. But it's uh, no matter how much of an awakening you have, you still have to learn things. Even even Christ, you know, like he's five years old. He didn't know everything that the universe has to offer and the multi dimensions of this universe and how you ascend through them. You know, it was something that would have to be learned while you're here in this body. And so they go pretty deeply into that and how we are likely going to be a, a mixed planet, a mixed harvest of negative and positive planet, which is ends up being, Ross said, about 30% of all planets and systems that uh, go through graduation from third to fourth, about 30% of them are mixed. And um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna be mixed. Uh, we're, we're a mixed bag here on this planet. <laughs> And another thing that they touched on and it didn't really become clear in this session is when they're talking about the Lagos and how our bodies interact in this density um, with the sun, with the other planets and how far our consciousness can go. And it's something to understand that 
if you look at our individual bodies, our second density bodies that can house a third density consciousness, so our bodies are an ecosystem of consciousness, you know, and like we could have like fungus growing on our toenail, say, and that would be um, a, a second density consciousness. And so I'm going to do a second, maybe a whole separate video if you guys are interested in really how the Lagos of the, the universe kind of works and how the ecosystem of consciousness folds together everything from um, the, the eco consciousness of our bodies that is separate from our third density conscious. And they talk about timelines and the way Ra, <laughs> the example that Ra gave for when we're choosing timelines of what we want to experience, he compared it to picking cereal out of the cereal aisle and that you have lots to choose from and it's whatever you actually choose to experience. Now, from timeline perspective, from six density like Ra, um, I've tried to explain this to like my family and friends, how um, when you're in six density, you are outside of time because we in third density experience linear time, even as we go through third density, like in our minds, it's like a line, like we, we are born, we have a life, we die. We're born again, we have a life, we die. And we see that as a linear format. And it's really hard for us to be able to go outside of that, you know, like think about um, instead of a linear line, just think of it as a spiral. And when from Ra's perspective, they're not within the spiral. They're far away from the spiral, looking at it from a distance and they can visit any part of the spiral at any given time, or I should say at any given point. So they're able to perceive things outside of time and they can also see timelines. That's why he described it as like a box of cereal in the cereal aisle because he could see all the timelines of someone sampling a different box of cereal that they chose through that lifetime and that timeline. So it's interesting the way he described it. And I, th I thought it was funny that he used cereal in a cereal aisle. It's an extremely packed session, so I hope you guys love it as much as I did. And I, at the end of the video, will also give a little bit of explanation on psychic healing, which they really get in depth with. And you might have heard me talk about this in other videos and other interviews. So we'll, we'll get more into that in the end. But here is the Law of One Raw Material, Book 3, Part 7. The Law of One, Book 3, Session 65, August 8th. 1981. Ra, I am Ra. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, could you first please give us an indication of the instrument's condition and the level of vital and physical energies? Ra, I am Ra. This instrument's vital energies are as previously stated. The physical energies are greatly distorted towards weakness at this space-time due to the distortion complexes, symptomatic of that which you call the arthritic condition. The level of psychic attack is constant but is being dealt with by this instrument in such a way as to eliminate serious difficulties due to its fidelity and that of the support group. Questioner, I may be recovering a little ground already covered today, but I am trying to get a more clear picture of some things that I don't understand and possibly develop a plan of my own for activity in the future. I have the impression that in the near future the seeking will increase by many who now are incarnate in the physical on this planet. Their seeking will increase because they will become more aware of the creation as it is and as it is opposed, I might say, to the creation of man. Their orientation and their thinking will be, by catalyst of a unique nature, reoriented to thinking of more basic concepts, shall I say. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. The generalities of expression can never be completely correct. However, we may note that when faced with a hole in the curtain, an entity's eyes may well peer for the first time through the window beyond. This tendency is probable given the possibility probability vortices active within your space-time and time-space continua at this nexus. Questioner. I have assumed that the reason that so many wanderers and those harvested third-density entities 
who have been transferred here find it a privilege and an exceptionally beneficial time to be incarnate upon this planet is that the effect that I just spoke of gives them the opportunity to be more fully of service because of the increased seeking. Is this, in general, correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is the intention which wanderers had prior to incarnation. There are many wanderers whose dysfunction with regard to the planetary ways of your peoples have caused, to some extent, a condition of being caught up in a configuration of mind complex activity which, to the corresponding extent, may prohibit the intended service. Questioner, I notice that you are speaking more slowly than usual. Is there a reason for this? Ra, I am Ra. This instrument is somewhat weak and although strong in vital energy and well able to function at this time, is somewhat more fragile than the usual condition we find. We may note a continuing bearing of the physical distortion called pain, which has a weakening effect upon physical energy. In order to use the considerable store of available energy without harming the instrument, we are attempting to channel even more narrow band than is our wont. Questioner, have I properly analyzed the condition that creates the possibility of greater service as follows? Seniority by vibration of incarnation has greatly polarized those upon the surface of the planet now. And the influx of wanderers has greatly increased the mental configuration toward things of a more spiritual nature. This would be, I assume, one of the factors creating a better atmosphere for service. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner. Would the coming changes as we progress into fourth density, such as changes in the physical third density planet due to the heating effect, and changes such as the ability of people to perform what we term paranormal activities act as catalysts to create a greater seeking? Ra, I am Ra. This is partially correct. The paranormal events occurring are not designed to increase seeking but are manifestations of those whose vibratory configuration enables these entities to contact the gateway to intelligent infinity. These entities capable of paranormal service may determine to be of such service on a conscious level. This, however, is a function of the entity and its free will and not the paranormal ability. The correct portion of your statements is the greater opportunity for service due to the many changes which will offer many challenges difficulties, and seeming distresses within your allusion to many who then will seek to understand, if we may use this misnomer. The reason for the malfunctioning of the physical rhythms of their planet. Moreover, there exists probability-possibility vortices which spiral towards your bellicose actions. Many of these vortices are not of the nuclear war but of the less annihilatory but more lengthy so-called conventional war. This situation, if formed in your illusion, would offer many opportunities for seeking and for service. Questioner, how would conventional warfare offer the opportunities for seeking and service? Ra, I am Ra. The possibility probabilities exist for situations in which great portions of your continent and the globe in general might be involved in the type of warfare which you might liken to guerrilla warfare. The ideal of freedom from the so-called invading force of either the controlled fascism or the equally controlled social common ownership of all things would stimulate great quantities of contemplation upon the great polarization implicit in the contrast between freedom and control. In this scenario, which is being considered at this time space nexus the idea of obliterating valuable sites and personnel would not be considered an useful one. Other weapons would be used which do not destroy as your nuclear arms would. In this ongoing struggle, the light of freedom would burn within the mind-body-spirit complexes capable of such polarization. Lacking the opportunity for overt expression of the love of freedom, the seeking for inner knowledge would take root aided by those of the brothers and sisters of sorrow which remember their calling upon this sphere. Questioner, we would seem to have dual catalysts operating, and the question is which one is going to act first. The prophecies, I will call them. Made by Edgar Casey indicated many earth changes and I am wondering about the mechanics describing the future. Ra, it has been stated, is not a part of time and yet we concern ourselves with possibility-probability vortices. It is very difficult for me to understand how the mechanism of prophecy operates. What is the value of such a prophecy such as Casey made with respect to earth changes and all of these scenarios? Ra, I am Ra. Consider the shopper entering the store to purchase food with which to furnish the table for the time period you call a week. Some stores have some items, others a variant set of offerings. 
We speak of these possibility-probability vortices when asked with the understanding that such are as a can, jar, or portion of goods in your store. It is unknown to us as we scan your time-space whether your peoples will shop hither or yon. We can only name some of the items available for the choosing. The, shall we say, record which the one you call Edgar Reed from is useful in that same manner. There is less knowledge in this material of other possibility-probability vortices and more attention paid to the strongest vortex. We see the same vortex but also see many others. Edgar's material could be likened unto 100 boxes of your cold cereal, another vortex likened unto 3, or 6, or 50 of another product which is eaten by your peoples for breakfast. That you will breakfast is close to certain. The menu is your own choosing. The value of prophecy must be realized to be only that of expressing possibilities. Moreover, it must be, in our humble opinion, carefully taken, into consideration that any time-space viewing, whether by one of your time-space or by one such as we who view the time-space from a dimension, shall we say, exterior to it will have a quite difficult time expressing time measurement values. Thus prophesy given in specific terms is more interesting for the content or type of possibility predicted than for the space-time nexus of its supposed occurrence. Questioner. So we have the distinct possibility of two different types of catalyst, creating an atmosphere of seeking that is greater than that which we experience at present. There will be much confusion, especially in the scenario of Earth changes simply because there have been many predictions of these changes by many groups giving many and sundry reasons for the changes. Can you comment on the effectiveness of this type of catalyst and the rather wide pre-knowledge of the coming changes, but also the wide variation in explanation for these changes? Ra, I am Ra. Given the amount of strength of the possibility-probability vortex which posits the expression by the planet itself, of the difficult birthing of the planetary self into fourth density, it would be greatly surprising were not many which have some access to space-time able to perceive this vortex. The amount of this cold cereal in the grocery, to use our previous analogy, is disproportionately large. Each which prophesies does so from an unique level, position, or vibratory configuration. Thus biases and distortions will accompany much prophecy. Questioner. This entire scenario for the next 20 years seems to be aimed at producing an increase in seeking and an increase in the awareness of the natural creation, but also a terrific amount of confusion. Was it the pre-incarnative objective of many of the wanderers to attempt to reduce this confusion? Ra, I am Ra. It was the aim of wanderers to serve the entities of this planet in whatever way was requested and it was also the aim of wanderers that their vibratory patterns might lighten the planetary vibration as a whole, thus ameliorating the effects of planetary disharmony and palliating any results of this disharmony. Specific intentions such as aiding in a situation not yet manifest are not the aim of wanderers. Light and love go where they are sought and needed, and their direction is not planned aforetimes. Questioner. Then each of the wanderers here acts as a function of the biases he has developed in any way he sees fit to communicate, or simply be in his polarity to aid the total consciousness of the planet. Is there any physical way in which he aids, perhaps by his vibrations somehow just? adding to the planet just as electrical polarity or charging a battery. Does that also aid the planet, just the physical presence of the wanderers? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct and the mechanism is precisely as you state. We intended this meaning in the second portion of our previous answer. You may, at this time, note that as with any entities, each wanderer has its unique abilities, biases and specialties so that from each portion of each density represented among the wanderers come an array of pre-incarnative talents, which then may be expressed upon this plane which you now experience so that each wanderer, in offering itself before incarnation, has some special service to offer in addition to the doubling effect of planetary love and light, and the basic function of serving as beacon or shepherd. Thus there are those of fifth density whose abilities to express wisdom are great, there are fourth and sixth density wanderers whose ability to serve as, shall we say, passive radiators or broadcasters of love and love light are immense. There are many others whose talents brought into this density are quite varied. Thus wanderers have three basic functions once the forgetting is penetrated, the first two being basic, the tertiary one being unique to that particular mind-body-spirit complex. 
We may note at this point while you ponder the possibility probability vortices that although you have many, many items which cause distress and thus offer seeking and service opportunities, there is always one container in that store of peace, love, light, and joy. This vortex may be very small, but to turn one's back upon it is to forget the infinite possibilities of the present moment. Could your planet polarize towards harmony in one fine, strong moment of inspiration? Yes, my friends. It is not probable, but it is ever possible. Questioner, how common in the universe is a mixed harvest from a planet of both positively and negatively oriented mind-body-spirit complexes? Ra, I am Ra. Among planetary harvests which yield an harvest of mind-body-spirit complexes, approximately 10% are negative, approximately 60% are positive, and approximately 30% are mixed with nearly all harvest being positive. In the event of mixed harvest it is almost unknown for the majority of the harvest to be negative. When a planet moves strongly towards the negative there is almost no opportunity for harvestable positive polarization. Questioner, can you tell me why there is almost no opportunity in that case? Ra, the ability to polarize positively requires a certain degree of self-determination. Questioner, then as these final days of the cycle transpire if the harvest were to occur now, today, it would have a certain number harvested positively and negatively and a certain number of repeaters. I am going to assume that because of the catalyst that will be experienced between now and the actual harvesting time these numbers of harvestable entities will increase. Generally speaking, not particularly with respect to this planet but with respect to general experience in harvesting, how big an increase in harvestable entities can you logically assume will occur because of the catalyst that occurs in the final period, such as this one? Or am I making a mistake in assuming that other planets have added catalyst at the end of a harvesting period, when they have a mixed harvest? Ra, I am Ra. In the event of mixed harvest there is nearly always disharmony and, therefore, added catalyst in the form of your so-called, Earth changes. In this assumption you are correct. It is the Confederation's desire to serve those who may indeed seek more intensely because of this added catalyst. We do not choose to attempt to project the success of added numbers to the harvest for this would not be appropriate. We are servants. If we are called, we shall serve with all our strength. To count the numbers is without virtue. Questioner. Now the added catalyst at the end of the cycle is a function specifically of the orientation of the consciousness that inhabits the planet. The consciousness has provided the catalyst for itself in orienting its thinking in the way it has oriented it thus acting upon itself the same as catalyst of bodily pain and disease act upon the single mind-body-spirit complex. I made this analogy once before but reiterated at this time to clarify my own thinking in seeing the planetary entity as somewhat of a single entity made up of billions of mind-body-spirit complexes. Is my viewpoint correct? Ra, I am Ra. You are quite correct. Questioner. Then we deal with an entity that has not yet formed a social memory but is yet an entity, just as one of us can be called a single entity. Can we continue this observation of the conglomerate entity through the galactic entity, or shall I say, planetary system type of entity? Let me try to phrase it this way. Could I look at a single sun in its planetary system as an entity and then look at a major galaxy with its billions of stars as an entity? Can I continue this extrapolation in this way? Ra, I am Ra. You can but not within the framework of third density space-time. Let us attempt to speak upon this interesting subject. In your space-time you and your peoples are the parents of that which is in the womb. The earth, as you call it, is ready to be born and the delivery is not going smoothly. When this entity has become born it will be instinct with the social memory complex of its parents which have become fourth density positive. In this density, there is a broader view. You may begin to see your relationship to the logos or sun with which you are most intimately associated. This is not the relationship of parent to child but of creator, that is logos, to creator that is the mind-body-spirit complex, as logos. When this realization occurs you may then widen the field of eyeshot, if you will, infinitely recognizing parts of the logos throughout the one infinite creation and feeling, with the roots of mind and forming the intuition. The parents aiding their planets in evolution in reaches vast and unknown in the creation, for this process occurs many, 
many times in the evolution of the creation as in whole. Questioner, the wanderer goes through a forgetting process. You mentioned that those who have both third and fourth density bodies activated now do not have the forgetting that the wanderer has. I was just wondering if, say, a sixth density wanderer were here with a third density body activated, would he have gone through a forgetting that was in sections, shall I say, a forgetting of fourth, fifth, and sixth densities, and if he were to have his fourth density body activated then he would have a partial additional memory, and then another partial memory if his fifth density body were activated and full memory if he had his sixth density body activated? Does this make any sense? Ra, I am Ra. No. Questioner, thank you. The forgetting process was puzzling me because you said that the fourth density activated people who were here who had been harvested did not have the same forgetting problem. Could you tell me why the wanderer loses his memory? Ra, I am Ra. The reason is twofold. First, the genetic properties of the connection between the mind-body-spirit complex and the cellular structure of the body is different for third density than for third-fourth density. Secondly, the free will of third density entities needs be preserved. Thus wanderers volunteer for third-density genetic or DNA connections to the mind-body-spirit complex. The forgetting process can be penetrated to the extent of the wanderer remembering what it is and why it is upon the planetary sphere. However, it would be an infringement if wanderers penetrated the forgetting so far as to activate the more dense bodies, and thus be able to live, shall we say, in a godlike manner. This would not be proper for those who have chosen to serve, the new fourth density entities, which are becoming able to demonstrate various newer abilities, are doing so as a result of the present experience, not as a result of memory. There are always a few exceptions, and we ask your forgiveness for constant barrages of overgeneralization. Questioner, I don't know if this question is related to what I am trying to get at or not. I'll ask it and see what results. You mentioned in speaking of the pyramids the resonating chamber was used so that the adept could meet the self. Would you explain what you meant by that? Ra, I am Ra. One meets the self in the center or deeps of the being. The so-called resonating chamber may be likened unto the symbology of the burial and resurrection of the body wherein the entity dies to self and through this confrontation of apparent loss and realization of essential gain is transmuted into a new and risen being. Questioner, could I make the analogy of in this apparent death of losing the desires that are the illusory? Common desires of third density and gaining desires of total service to others? Ra, I am Ra. You are perceptive. This was the purpose and intent of this chamber as well as forming a necessary portion of the king's chamber position's effectiveness. Questioner, can you tell me what this chamber did to the entity to create this awareness in him? Ra, I am Ra. This chamber worked upon the mind and the body. The mind was affected by sensory deprivation and the archetypical reactions to being buried alive with no possibility of extricating the self. The body was affected both by the mind configuration and by the electrical and piezoelectrical properties of the materials, which were used in the construction of the resonating chamber. This will be the last full query of this working. May we ask if there are any brief queries at this time? Questioner, is there anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to improve the contact? Ra, I am Ra. We feel that the instrument is well supported and that all is well. We caution each regarding this instrument's distortions towards pain, for it dislikes sharing these expressions, but as support group this instrument subconsciously accepts each entity's aid. All is in alignment. You are conscientious. We thank you for this. I am Ra. I leave you, my friends, rejoicing in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth, therefore, glorying in the power and in the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. The Law of One, Book 3, Session 66 August 12, 1981. Ra, I am Ra. I greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We communicate now. Questioner, I would like to investigate the mechanism of healing using the crystallized healer. I am going to make a statement, and I would appreciate it if you would correct my thinking. 
It seems to me that once the healer has become properly balanced and unblocked with respect to energy centers, it is possible for him to act in some way as a collector and focuser of light in a way analogous to the way a pyramid works. Collecting light through the left hand and emitting it through the right, this then, somehow, penetrating the first and seventh chakra's vibratory envelope of the body, and allowing for the realignment of energy centers of the entity to be healed. I'm quite sure that I'm not completely correct on this and possibly considerably off. Could you rearrange my thinking so that it makes sense? Ra, I am Ra. You are correct in your assumption that the crystallized healer is analogous to the pyramidal action of the king's chamber position. There are a few adjustments we might suggest. Firstly, the energy which is used is brought into the field complex of the healer by the outstretched hand used in a polarized sense. However, this energy circulates through the various points of energy to the base of the spine and, to a certain extent, the feet, thus coming through the main energy centers of the healer spiraling through the feet. Turning at the red energy center towards a spiral at the yellow energy center and passing through the green energy center, in a microcosm of the king's chamber energy configuration of prana. This then continuing for the third spiral through the blue energy center and being sent there from through the gateway back to intelligent infinity. It is from the green center that the healing prana moves into the polarized healing right hand and there from to the one to be healed. We may note that there are some who use the yellow ray configuration to transfer energy and this may be done but the effects are questionable. And, with regard to the relationship between the healer, the healing energy, and the seeker. Questionable due to the propensity for the seeker to continue requiring such energy transfers, without any true healing taking place in the absence of the healer due to the lack of penetration of the armoring shell of which you spoke. Questioner, a wanderer who has an origin from 5th or 6th density can attempt such a healing and have little or no results. Can you tell me what the wanderer has lost and why it is necessary for him to regain certain balances and abilities for him to perfect his healing ability? Ra, I am Ra. You may see the wanderer as the infant attempting to verbalize the sound complexes of your peoples. The memory of the ability to communicate is within the infant's undeveloped mind complex but the ability to practice or manifest this called speech is not immediately forthcoming due to the limitations of the mind-body-spirit complex it has chosen to be a part of in this experience. So it is with the wanderer which, remembering the ease with which adjustments can be made in the home density, yet still having entered third density, cannot manifest that memory due to the limitation of the chosen experience. The chances of a wanderer being able to heal in third density are only more than those native to this density because the desire to serve may be stronger and this method of service chosen. Questioner, what about the ones with the dual type of activated third and fourth density bodies, harvested from other third density planets? Are they able to heal using the techniques that we have discussed? Ra, I am Ra. In many cases this is so, but as beginners of fourth density, the desire may not be present. Questioner, I'm assuming, then, that we have a wanderer with the desire attempting to learn the techniques of healing while, shall I say, trapped in third density. He then, it seems to me, is primarily concerned with the balancing and unblocking of the energy centers. Am I correct in this assumption? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Only in so far as the healer has become balanced may it be a channel for the balancing of another self. The healing is first practiced upon the self, if we may say this, in another way. Questioner, now as the healer approaches an other self to do the healing we have a situation where the other self has, through programming of catalyst, possibly created a condition which is viewed as a condition needing healing. What is the situation and what are the ramifications of the healer acting upon the condition of programmed catalyst to bring about healing? Am I correct in assuming that in doing this healing? The programmed catalyst is useful to the one to be healed in that the one to be healed then becomes aware of what it wished to become aware of in programming the catalyst? Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. Your thinking cannot be said to be completely incorrect, but shows a rigidity, which is not apparent in the flow of the experiential use of catalyst. The role of the healer is to offer an opportunity for realignment or aid in realignment of either energy centers or some connection between the energies of mind and body, spirit and mind, or spirit and body. This latter is very rare. The seeker will then have the reciprocal opportunity to accept a novel view of the self, 
a variant arrangement of patterns of energy influx. If the entity, at any level, desires to remain in the configuration of distortion which seems to need healing it will do so. If, upon the other hand, the seeker chooses the novel configuration, it is done through free will. This is one great difficulty with other forms of energy transfer in that they do not carry through the process of free will as this process is not native to yellow ray. Questioner, what is the difference, philosophically, between a mind-body-spirit complex healing itself through mental, shall I say, configuration and it being healed by an healer? Ra, I am Ra. You have a misconception. The healer does not heal. The crystallized healer is a channel for intelligent energy which offers an opportunity to an entity that it might heal itself. In no case is there an other description of healing. Therefore, there is no difference as long as the healer never approaches one whose request for aid has not come to it previously. This is also true of the more conventional healers of your culture and if these healers could but fully realize that they are responsible only for offering the opportunity of healing and not for the healing. Many of these entities would feel an enormous load of misconceived responsibility fall from them. Questioner then in seeking healing a mind-body-spirit complex would then be seeking in some cases a source of gathered and focused light energy. This source could be another mind-body-spirit complex sufficiently crystallized for this purpose or the pyramid shape, or possibly something else. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. These are some of the ways an entity may seek healing. Yes. Questioner, could you tell me the other ways an entity could seek healing? Ra, I am Ra. Perhaps the greatest healer is within the self and may be tapped with continued meditation as we have suggested. The many forms of healing available to your peoples. Each have virtue and may be deemed appropriate by any seeker who wishes to alter the physical complex distortions or some connection between the various portions of the mind-body-spirit complex thereby. Questioner, I have observed many activities known as psychic surgery in the area of the Philippine Islands. It was my assumption that these healers are providing what I would call a training aid, or a way of creating a reconfiguration of the mind of the patient to be healed, as the relatively naive patient observes the action of the healer in seeing the materialized blood, etc. And reconfigures the roots of mind to believe, you might say, the healing is done and, therefore, heals himself. Is this analysis that I have made correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. We may speak slightly further on the type of opportunity. There are times when the malcondition to be altered is without emotional, mental, or spiritual interest to the entity and is merely that which has, perhaps by chance genetic arrangement, occurred. In these cases that which is apparently dematerialized will remain dematerialized and may be observed as so by any observer. The malcondition which has an emotional, mental, or spiritual charge is likely not to remain dematerialized in the sense of the showing of the objective referent to an observer. However, if the opportunity has been taken by the seeker the apparent malcondition of the physical complex will be at variance with the actual health, as you call this distortion, of the seeker and the lack of experiencing the distortions which the objective referent would suggest still held sway. For instance, in this instrument the removal of three small cysts was the removal of material having no interest to the entity. Thus these growths remained dematerialized after the so-called psychic surgery experience. In other psychic surgery the kidneys of this instrument were carefully offered a new configuration of beingness which the entity embraced. However, this particular portion of the mind-body-spirit complex carried a great deal of emotional, mental, and spiritual charge due to this distorted functioning being the cause of great illness in a certain configuration of events, which culminated in this entity's conscious decision to be of service. Therefore, any objective scanning of this entity's renal complex would indicate the rather extreme dysfunctional aspect, which it showed previous to the psychic surgery experience, as you call it. The key is not in the continuation of the dematerialization of distortion to the eye of the beholder, but rather lies in the choosing of the newly materialized configuration which exists in time-space. Questioner, would you explain that last comment about the configuration in time-space? Ra, I am Ra. Healing is done in the time-space portion of the mind-body-spirit complex, is adopted by the form-making or etheric body and is then given to the space-time physical illusion for use in the activated yellow mind-body-spirit complex. 
it is the adoption of the configuration which you call health by the etheric body in time-space, which is the key to what you call health, not any event which occurs in space-time. In the process you may see the trans-dimensional aspect of what you call will, for it is the will, the seeking, the desire of the entity which causes the indigo body to use the novel configuration and to reform the body, which exists in space-time. This is done in an instant and may be said to operate without regard to time. We may note that in the healing of very young children there is often an apparent healing by the healer in which the young entity has no part. This is never so, for the mind-body-spirit complex in time-space is always capable of willing the distortions it chooses for experience no matter what the apparent age, as you call it, of the entity. Questioner is this desire and will that operates through to the time-space section a function only of the entity who is healed or is it also the function of the healer, the crystallized healer? Ra, I am Ra. May we take this opportunity to say that this is the activity of the creator. To specifically answer your query, the crystallized healer has no will. It offers an opportunity without attachment to the outcome, for it is aware that all is one and that the creator is knowing itself. Questioner then the desire must be strong in the mind-body-spirit complex who seeks healing to be healed in order for the healing to occur. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct on one level or another. An entity may not consciously seek healing and yet subconsciously be aware of the need to experience the new set of distortions, which result from healing. Similarly an entity may consciously desire healing greatly but within the being, at some level, Find some cause whereby certain configurations, which seem quite distorted are, in fact, at that level, considered appropriate. Questioner. I assume that the reason for assuming the distortions appropriate would be that these distortions would aid the entity in its reaching its ultimate objective, which is a movement along the path of evolution in the desired polarity. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is correct. Questioner. Then an entity who becomes aware of his polarization with respect to service to others might find a paradoxical situation in the case where it was unable to fully serve because of distortions, chosen to reach the understanding it has reached. At this point it would seem that the entity who was aware of the mechanism might, through meditation, understand the necessary mental configuration for alleviating the physical distortion so that it could be of greater service to others. At this particular nexus am I correct in this thinking? Ra, I am Ra. You are correct although we might note that there are often complex reasons for the programming of a distorted physical complex pattern. In any case, meditation is always an aid to knowing the self. Questioner, is a vertical positioning of the spine useful or helpful in the meditative procedure? Ra, I am Ra. It is somewhat helpful. Questioner, would you please list the polarities within the body which are related to the balancing of the energy centers of the various bodies? of the unmanifested entity? Ra, I am Ra. In this question there lies a great deal of thought which we appreciate. It is possible that the question itself may serve to aid meditations upon this particular subject. Each unmanifested self is unique. The basic polarities have to do with the balanced vibratory rates and relationships between the first three energy centers, and to a lesser extent, each of the other energy centers. May we answer more specifically? Questioner, possibly in the next session we will expand on that. I would like to ask the second question. What are the structure and contents of the archetypical mind, and how does the archetypical mind function in informing the intuition and conscious mind of an individual mind-body-spirit complex? Ra, I am Ra. You must realize that we offered these concepts to you so that you might grow in your own knowledge of the self through the consideration of them. We would prefer, especially for this latter query, to listen to the observations upon this subject which the student of these exercises may make and then suggest further avenues of the refinement of these inquiries. We feel we might be of more aid in this way. Questioner. You mentioned that an energizing spiral is emitted from the top of any pyramid and that you could benefit by placing this under the head for a period of 30 minutes or less. Can you tell me how this third spiral is helpful and what help it gives the entity who is receiving it? Ra, I am Ra. There are substances which you may ingest which cause the physical vehicle to experience distortions towards an increase of energy. 
These substances are crude, working rather roughly upon the body complex increasing the flow of adrenaline. The vibration offered by the energizing spiral of the pyramid is such that each cell, both in space-time and in time-space, is charged as if hooked to your electricity. The keenness of mind, the physical and sexual energy of body, and the attunement of will of spirit are all touched by this energizing influence. It may be used in any of these ways. It is possible to overcharge a battery, and this is the cause of our cautioning any who use such pyramidal energies to remove the pyramid after a charge has been received. Questioner, is there a best material or an optimal size for this small pyramid to go beneath the head? Ra, I am Ra. Given that the proportions are such as to develop the spirals in the Giza pyramid, the most appropriate size for use beneath the head is an overall height small enough to make placing it under the cushion of the head a comfortable thing. Questioner, there's no best material? Ra, I am Ra. There are better materials which are, in your system of barter, quite dear. They are not that much better than substances which we have mentioned before. The only incorrect substances would be the baser metals. Questioner, you mentioned the problems with the action in the king's chamber of the Gizatite pyramid. I am assuming if we used the same geometrical configuration that is used in the pyramid at Giza this would be perfectly all right for the pyramid placed beneath the head, since we wouldn't be using the king's chamber radiations but only the third spiral from the top. And I'm also asking if it would be better to use a 60 degrees apex angle than the larger apex angle? Would it provide a better energy source? Ra, I am Ra. For energy through the apex angle, the Giza pyramid offers an excellent model. Simply be sure the pyramid is so small that there is no entity small enough to crawl inside it. Questioner, I assume that this energy then, this spiraling light energy, is somehow absorbed by the energy field of the body. Is this somehow connected to the indigo energy center? Am I correct in this guess? Ra, I am Ra. This is incorrect. The properties of this energy are such as to move within the field of the physical complex and irradiate each cell of the space-time body, and, as this is done, irradiate also the time-space equivalent which is closely aligned with the space-time yellow ray body. This is not a function of the etheric body or of free will. This is a radiation much like your sun's rays. Thus it should be used with care. Questioner, how many applications of 30 minutes or less during a diurnal time period would be appropriate? Ra, I am Ra. In most cases, no more than one. In a few cases, especially where the energy will be used for spiritual work, experimentation with two shorter periods might be possible, but any feeling of sudden weariness would be a sure sign that the entity had been overradiated. Questioner, can this energy help in any way as far as healing of physical distortions? Ra, I am Ra. There is no application for direct healing using this energy although, if used in conjunction with meditation, it may offer to a certain percentage of entities some aid in meditation. In most cases it is most helpful in alleviating weariness and in the stimulation of physical or sexual activity. Questioner. In a transition from third to fourth density we have two other possibilities other than the type that we are experiencing now. We have the possibility of a totally positively polarized harvest and the possibility of a totally negatively polarized harvest that I understand have occurred elsewhere in the universe many times. When there is a totally negatively polarized harvest, the whole planet that has negatively polarized makes the transition from third to fourth density. Does the planet have the experience of the distortion of disease that this planet now experiences prior to that transition? Ra, I am Ra. You are perceptive. The negative harvest is one of intense disharmony and the planet will express this. Questioner, the planet has a certain set of conditions in late third density, and then the conditions are different in early fourth density. Could you give me an example of a negatively polarized planet and the conditions in late third density and early fourth density so that I can see how they change? Ra, I am Ra. The vibrations from third to fourth density change on a negatively oriented planet precisely, as they do upon a positively oriented planet. With fourth density negative comes many abilities and possibilities of which you are familiar. The fourth density is more dense and it is far more difficult to hide the true vibrations of the mind-body-spirit complex. 
This enables fourth density negatives, as well as positives, the chance to form social memory complexes. It enables negatively oriented entities the opportunity for a different set of parameters, with which to show their power over others and to be of service to the self. The conditions are the same as far as the vibrations are concerned. Questioner, I was concerned about the amount of physical distortions, disease, and that sort of thing in third density negative just before harvesting and in fourth density negative just after harvesting, or in transition. What are the conditions of the physical problems, disease, etc. in late third density negative? Ra, I am Ra. Each planetary experience is unique. The problems, shall we say, of bellicose actions are more likely to be of pressing concern to late third density negative entities than the Earth's reactions to negativity of the planetary mind. For it is often by such warlike attitudes on a global scale that the necessary negative polarization is achieved. As fourth density occurs there is a new planet and new physical vehicle system gradually expressing itself, and the parameters of bellicose actions become those of thought rather than manifested weapons. Questioner. Well then is physical disease and illness as we know it on this planet rather widespread on a third density negative planet before harvest, into fourth density negative? Ra, I am Ra. Physical complex distortions of which you speak are likely to be less found as fourth density negative begins to be a probable choice of harvest due to the extreme interest in the self which characterizes the harvestable third density, negative entity. Much more care is taken of the physical body as well as much more discipline being offered to the self mentally. This is an orientation of great self-interest and self-discipline. There are still instances of the types of disease which are associated with the mind complex distortions of negative emotions, such as anger. However, in an harvestable entity these emotional distortions are much more likely to be used as catalyst in an expressive and destructive sense as regards the object of anger. Questioner, I am trying to understand the way that disease and bodily distortions are generated with respect to polarities, both positive and negative. It seems that they are generated in some way to create the split of polarization, that they have a function in creating the original polarization that occurs in third density. Is this correct? Ra, I am Ra. This is not precisely correct. Distortions of the bodily or mental complex are those distortions found in beings which have need of experiences which aid in polarization. These polarizations may be those of entities which have already chosen the path or polarization to be followed. It is more likely for positively oriented individuals to be experiencing distortions within the physical complex due to the lack of consuming interest in the self and the emphasis on service to others. Moreover, in an unpolarized entity catalyst of the physical distortion nature will be generated at random. The hopeful result is, as you say, the original choice of polarity. Oftentimes this choice is not made but the catalyst continues to be generated. In the negatively oriented individual, the physical body is likely to be more carefully tended, and the mind disciplined against physical distortion. Questioner, this planet, to me, seems to be what I would call a cesspool of distortions. This includes all diseases and malfunctions of the physical body in general. It would seem to me that, on the average, this planet would be very, very high on the list if we just took the overall amount of these problems. Am I correct in this assumption? Ra, I am Ra. We will review previous material. Catalyst is offered to the entity. If it is not used by the mind complex it will then filter through to the body complex and manifest as some form of physical distortion. The more efficient the use of catalyst, the less physical distortion to be found. There are, in the case of those you call wanderers, not only a congenital difficulty in dealing with the third density vibratory patterns but also a recollection, however dim, that these distortions are not necessary or usual in the home vibration. We overgeneralize as always. For there are many cases of pre-incarnative decisions which result in physical or mental limitations and distortions, but we feel that you are addressing the question of widespread distortions towards misery of one form or another. Indeed, on some third-density planetary spheres catalyst has been used more efficiently. In the case of your planetary sphere there is much inefficient use of catalyst and, therefore, much physical distortion. We have enough energy available for one query at this time. Questioner, 
Then I will ask if there is anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or to improve the contact. Ra, I am Ra. Continue as always in love. All is well. You are conscientious. I am Ra. I leave you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one infinite creator. Adonai. Okay, they went into this session, they talked about Carla a little bit. And if you remember in book one, um, they talked about how Carla went through a psychic surgery. And this was mentioned again in this last session. And a lot of people wanted to kind of like jump on this where when people would go to South America, and they would go to some, you know, guru that would lie them down on a curtain and, and dig into their abdomen and pull out pieces of, of flesh or what it looked like and there would be blood everywhere and it was deemed a fraud, right? Everyone kind of want to jump on that saying that it was a fraud. But the thing is, what they, what Ra is trying to get through in these sessions and it happened to Carla, she had the cysts removed and her kidneys function better and she had all these elements within her body that got healed after the psychic surgery. Now what Ra is trying to talk about, it was the placebo effect. When people go to um, these shamans or these gurus and for healing and go into these psychic surgeries that seem to be performing miracles when it's later deemed a fraud, that is because the person that is experiencing the psychic surgery have no doubt that this will heal them. These are miracle workers and they will be healed from these sessions, you know, so you can deem it a fraud all you want, but the, a cure is a cure, even though it was their own consciousness that, that made their body heal. And that was what Ra was just trying to, trying to get across in that, is that almost instantaneously, you can heal your body through your consciousness, right? And, and that's what happened to Carla. And that's what happens mostly in all medical uh, communities. The placebo effect is is real. It's about 30%. And it's extremely hard to beat the placebo effect when people think that they're getting the actual uh, medicine to heal them. They Their bodies miraculously heal, but it was their consciousness that was doing it. And that's something that we are really going to learn a lot in fourth density. And then the questioners were asking, um, you know, they want us to know more about negative fourth density and what uh, the planet is like at the end of a third density moving into fourth density negative. And the questioners, uh, they, they were starting to think that there must be a lot of disease and horribleness in fourth density negative, but actually the opposite is true. Because remember, fourth density uh, negative is actually service to self. So if you're really concerned about yourself, you're really going to be concerned about your own health, your own body, you are, you are going to take care of yourself so carefully because that's all you care about, you will actually have no diseases within yourself, right? And you almost want to look at what almost like narcissists, they, they, they care so much about what they look like and their being healthy. They want to live a long life and reap the rewards that they're always trying to get. But in fourth density uh, negative, it's more about like mental control, sustaining fear and having power over others. And that's more of a mental um, aspect of negative fourth density. So there's actually not a lot of disease, but, um, on a mixed planet that is going into uh, fourth density, there is a split. There's some that are going to have to redo third density so they can polarize. Some of them are going to go into fourth density negative and some will go into fourth density positive. And about 90% will be positive. That 10% negative will go off elsewhere. And they did talk about earth changes. And this comes into um, the effect as when we're dealing with an ecosystem of consciousness. And it would be the entire earth because the earth is a living 
being. It is a living consciousness, just like we are third density consciousness housed in an ecosystem of our own bodies. You want to think of the earth being alive with a overall consciousness. And we are on the earth as part of earth's ecosystem of consciousness, just the same. So when you polarize an entire planet, like the living earth, there's going to be earth uh, changes where there's going to be calamities that happen within the cycles as you move through the densities and this will happen to earth and it might not it might seem unfair that um you know there's going to be earthquakes and vol volcanoes and our poles are shifting and they're probably going to completely reverse in the next 10 years and they did mention how Edgar Casey talked about the pole shifting and how that will probably happen as part of moving into fourth density uh, because the earth itself as a consciousness will need to move into a different density. And we're probably going to witness that. So there will be a lot of earth changes. Uh, I'll probably put that in another uh, video, but we're moving along with this material. Uh, we're going to be into session eight next. So I will see you in the next video. Thanks for listening, guys.